In the two hours I had driving back from a photo shoot uh, to my office the day of BSC, uh, I have to admit my mind was just whirling. And I think if I had had any idea what was going to happen to me in the six months to come, I may not have gone back to the office that day. So it's probably a good thing that none of us really knew what we were about to expect. We had a small office of about nine staff people. Uh, two of us who were able to answer media questions, uh, aside from our office managers and our receptionists and our bookkeepers, uh, we had the executive director of the Ontario Cattlemen's and myself as the communications manager for the industry able to speak to the public. That first day, between about 11 a.m. when the first call came in and I'm going to say 10 o'clock at night, we had 200 media calls come through and we had two of us uh, ready to do them. So at that point, you really have to set up a triage system saying, here's the television crews that need it for the 6 o'clock news. Here's the daily reporters that are probably going to need their stories by about 11 o'clock tonight when their papers go to press. And here's the weekly newspapers that may have a deadline three or four days down the road. What we started doing was giving the weekly uh, newspaper phone numbers to the staff in our office who weren't able to answer their questions, but just calling them back, finding out when their deadlines were and saying, we will get back to you in the next couple of days. If this is Tuesday and your deadline's Friday, we promise we'll get back to you by Friday. We, um, I told you that we had a team of producers, uh, I called them my speak up team, uh, trained in Ontario, ready to go for a crisis. I had other staff people making sure that those producers had the fact sheets on BSC, they had memos for me saying here's what's going on, we'll keep you up to date as we can, be by your phone if, if you can be. Uh, we had them ready to go, we had the television crews that we were calling back saying whose farm do you need to go to, where are you located, yes if you're in the Ottawa area we can find you a farmer within an hour of Ottawa, they're waiting for your call. And in the office, we were, we were doing the radio interviews and the weekly or the daily newspapers. And I'm, I'm happy to say we got through most of those 200 calls that first day. We were there well past midnight that night returning phone calls. I know that when you'd hang up on one, uh, you'd usually have six more messages sitting on your desk waiting to go. But I'm happy to say in that first year, I think we did about 1,000 media interviews out of our office between May and December of that year. And I don't think there was a single reporter that we didn't get back to within about a 24-hour period. And I was really proud of that. My team of farmers, I can't say enough good things about. And I'm, I'm proud to report that most of the farm groups in Ontario now have, as a result of seeing how our group worked, a trained team, of, a speak-up team of their own. That team were amazing. Every morning um, in the two weeks after BSC, we would have a conference call between 7.30 and 8 o'clock in the morning. So the Speak Up Team concept was actually created by our sister group Ontario Pork in about 2000, 2001 um, when at the time the Cattlemen's Association hadn't really thought we needed one and then after Walkerton realized how invaluable that would be. So we started training our own. It was absolutely critical that this team not be at all political in nature. So none of my board of directors members were on my Speak Up team. Um, we just wanted uh, individual farmers. They were told they would never have to speak on behalf of the association. They'd never have to do anything political. They were just speaking on behalf of their industry as a, as a beef farmer in the province of Ontario. So the first two days we brought them in for sort of a media training boot camp 101. Um, these producers knew that they are not trained spokespeople and most of them had never spoken in front of a camera in their lives. We'd start them by getting them up and talking about their farm. Five minutes on your farm operation, your family, your hopes for the future. And then when they sat down you'd say, whether you realize it or not, you just did your first public speaking. And they said, well that's easy, we know about that topic. And I said, that's the point of this exercise. So the first time we brought them in, we did two days, started them off easy, worked them through various question and answer techniques, and by day two, they were doing media interviews in front of a camera, playing back those camera clips, talking about how they could have answered that question better, here's what they might have thought about, here's when you look at the camera, here's when you look at your wife if you're doing the interview, etc. cetera. And, and that really evolved. Uh, uh, when I was at the Cattlemen's then, even after the crisis was over, we kept bringing them in every 9 to 12 months and doing different exercises with them. One was on dealing with difficult people. One was on um, 
speaking at uh, municipal meetings. So if you have a bylaw coming up in your area that's going to affect agriculture as a whole, here's how you get involved in that system you know, to represent your industry at a political level. Um, again, not our association, but their industry. And uh, that it's, it's really evolved in that most of the organizations, most of the livestock organizations in Ontario now have these trained people. Uh, a lot of the livestock groups now do joint speak up team training, which I think is fantastic because beef farmers can realize that their issues are so similar to hog farmers, to egg farmers, to chicken farmers. Now the crash crop industry also has their team of producers. And it's taken off across Canada. Uh, we've done training in the maritime provinces. Uh, because they're smaller organizations, they're sharing one speak up team amongst all of agriculture, say in the province of Prince Edward Island. And uh, we're just delighted to see this taking off. One of the challenges that we had, and it actually became a great challenge to have, was the patriotism that came out of this crisis. The media had done such a good job communicating how desperate Canadian beef farmers were and how ma so many of them were struggling to survive that the number of phone calls and letters and emails we got coming in saying, we want to support Canadian beef farmers. We want to have a fundraiser barbecue. We want to have a charity event. We want to have a music concert. Um, how can we help you? That almost became overwhelming at times. And uh, the amount of bumper stickers that four years later you still see on Canadian beef vehicles saying, I love Canadian beef. Um, at the time, there were signs up in Canadian airports. So when you arrived at arrivals and a lot of flights at various airports in Canada, you'd come down escalators to big banners that said, eat Canadian beef or I love Canadian beef. And, and that sort of patriotism was was unheard of uh, when it came to food and you know Canadian beef and that was really exciting for us. The support for beef farmers uh, is con completely owed to the media for doing just a fantastic job of their coverage. Because the media didn't participate in any fear-mongering tactics at all, because they were so good at saying this is one case in one herd in 14 million animals, uh, let's put this all into perspective people, you have a better chance of being um, hit if you're driving in your car today than you do of getting BSC or, or anything from eating contaminated beef, that the consumers realized that and there was never any fear. I have a lot of friends from urban centers and talking to them, they were going out and you know stocking up on Canadian beef. Um, friends making sure that they, you know, urban friends who have never been on a farm in their lives except knowing me, going into their grocery stores and saying, I'd like to buy some Canadian beef today. Can you assure me that this is coming from Canadian cattle? Restaurants doing the same thing. Restaurants having big uh, Canadian beef campaigns. There was a chain of hotels in, in Canada that made sure that all they featured was Canadian beef and on their menu you actually saw the I Love Canadian Beef stickers, logos, right on their menus. And, and again, I owe, owe all of that to the media and to farmers for doing a really good job of getting their messages out to the media.